Hey everyone, let's start the vlog early on a Friday afternoon by talking about work. If you follow me on Twitter, you know that I've had a stressful and demanding week at work. Mostly I struggled with concentration and technology. I worked from home three days this week and it is already more difficult to do my job from home than at the office. But when technology is even slower and you have a lot to do, it's very frustrating. And I am not a very patient person when it comes to slow technology. I get frustrated easily. And when I have slow brain space or my brain is taking longer to process things already, then waiting for technology is not helping. So I managed to get everything done that I needed to get done, but I had really long work days and was exhausted afterwards. So I basically got home and binge watched the same show. I'm about one and a half times through already. I think it's called My Only Love Song in English. Not exactly sure. And that was all I did. I worked, I exercised some, not as much as I would have liked to. I skipped a lot of walks this week and I didn't pick up my book at all. I read some or I listened to some more of Moby Dick. I think I have a little over three hours left in the audiobook so this weekend I am going to finish that and I am looking forward to that. But I have not picked up the Authenticity Project at all. I'm slightly worried that I'm avoiding the oncoming drama which might dissolve in the next two three chapters already so i don't know why i'm avoiding it but i definitely know that i wasn't in a headspace to read at all so i am hoping to read the second half of the authenticity project this weekend as well saturday morning and i must say the only good thing about not being able to sleep is that you get a lot of reading in before you have to start your day i spent the last three hours reading the authenticity project and like i told you yesterday there was a little bit drama i was avoiding and it wasn't as stressful as expected surprise it never is i'm always more worried about the drama happening than the drama actually happening anyways if you haven't seen my last vlog the authenticity project is um, novel about people who wrote their true selves in a book, sort of. This old artist started this project where he wrote into a book the true story of himself. Of course, an interpretation of what he thinks is true and authentic about himself. But then he left the book in a cafe. The owner of the cafe found it, wrote her story in it and passed the book on. We're following these varying characters. We're up to five now. And it is very interesting how they are interacting and how they are connected by the book, how a friendship starts and some romance aspects, but it's also more. I'm a little over halfway through the book now and the last 80 or 100 pages were focusing a lot on the ideas we have about people. It's really fascinating to see how it makes a difference, how we look at people and interpret what we see if the characters read the true story about themselves or not. So there are people who have read the stories of all that came before, but everyone has only read the stories of the people before them. So every person who comes new to the group is first judged on their appearance, on what they look like, what they show. So not the authentic self, the secrets they are hiding and not telling everyone out open, but maybe close friends, even if that. And it's fascinating to think about, especially since the latest character is an influencer. And with the aspect of Instagram coming into it, I was thinking before I read that last night that it would be interesting or good if we could see ourselves like others could. But I was thinking of only the positive things, like how we can't see our lives and ourselves as good as other people see us, especially the people who like us. But here, a lot of the judgments are really judgments and they're not nice and I didn't even think of that yesterday when I had that thought so it's very fascinating to see how we see people and to what ideas and assumptions we jump just from the way they dress from the way they walk and we can't see the insecurities behind that or the amount of effort that goes into presenting that kind of life it's fascinating. I'm really curious to see where all of this is going. And now I'm going for a run. Like I said, it's still early. It's sunny, but super cold. And I hope to get 10K again, but I don't know. I'll talk to you later. My legs didn't agree with 10 kilometers. I barely managed six. 
but that's okay. I almost finished Moby Dick and I read another 80 pages in the Authenticity Project, but now I want to go on a bike ride because it's super nice outside. It's still cold, but it's super sunny, so I want to go on a bike ride and maybe get food somewhere? I don't know yet. I'm hoping to take at least an hour outside on the bike that I can finish Moby Dick. And I'm starting to feel that this book has been marketed completely wrongly at me. I don't know. I'll keep you updated later. That was a nice afternoon. I went on a very successful bike ride, finishing Moby Dick. I really enjoyed the book. I kept thinking the more we came towards the end and more of Captain Ahab's story and meeting Moby Dick appeared, that the book, or I had the wrong idea of the book, because for me it was always marketed or presented or summed up as this grand story about an old man obsessed with a whale and revenge. And this is just one part of the story. And I always thought that all the whaling stuff and all the other descriptions and things that took endlessly to take place were background. But when I think about it after having read it, I think this book is more about going on a whaling adventure, meeting the seamen, the different characters who go on a whaling ship. And we learn a lot about the different people. We learn about the life on a whaling ship. We learn a lot about whaling and whales, yes. But if you look at the book as being about that and not just that being the backdrop to the great hunt of a white whale, which is basically, I think it was the last two hours of the audiobook of 18. I must admit, I listened to 1.35 speed, so I think every number is higher. Anyways, the book is wonderfully written. The writing is really captivating, well done, the descriptions, the dialogues. Sometimes it feels very poetic, sometimes it feels like telling stories of characters. The characters you meet are very diverse and interesting and you get to really know life on a boat and what it feels like and what the characters think and feel like and their worries and all of these things which are never talked about. At least I didn't understand it in the way that people talk about Moby Dick. They either say it's long, it's endless, it's boring, it's about Ahab and the white whale and his obsession with it, but I didn't really feel that as the main part of the story. And I stick to my recommendation of using the audiobook. William Hootkins does such a wonderful job at bringing the adventure and the action to life, especially at the end. It was really at the edge of my seat if I wasn't on a bike. After that, I got some food and started reading more in the Authenticity Project. And because it was so captivating, I got a coffee somewhere else as well and finished it. I'm very proud of myself for going out to eat in stores again, feeling less stressed by it and even relaxed enough to read more. And I love this. When I first saw this book, it was months ago, and I was weary of picking it up because it looks like something I might like or hate. It's one of those books that really appeals to me from the cover design and the font and everything and the colors, but it also looks like something that has the potential to be very cheesy and annoying to me. And I'm glad to say that I really enjoyed it. There were some twists and turns that I didn't expect at the ending. The romance ended the way I expected it and I'm not mad about it. I wasn't really that invested in the characters for the romance, but I really was invested for the characters and seeing how they evolved and how their life changed due to the Authenticity Project. Overall, I really liked how fast it read. It had very short chapters from different perspectives all the time. So if you don't like multiple narrations or multiple perspective um, novels, you will not like this book. You often get five or six pages per person and then you switch the person again. Sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's not. But the short chapters and the constant change of perspective and voice makes it a very fast paced book for me. So I could really fly through the last 80 pages that I had left before my bike ride. And I enjoyed how the story ended. I really liked the twists and the turns. I really liked look at how your life can change if you're more honest about yourself. If you're being out and open about 
the real you and not trying to uphold a picture that everybody has of you or that you want to present to the outside world. It's also talking of loneliness and how to connect to people. It's not that it's a message that you haven't heard before. It's basically be outgoing, be nice and be honest and your authentic self and dare to do things. Then you meet people and you might be surprised of how that changed their life. So you could sum it up in an Instagram post, I guess. But overall, I really enjoyed this book and I'm kind of surprised that I haven't heard anyone talk about this before. The only place I've seen this literally is my bookshop. And that rarely happens nowadays with books. I don't know. I hope you can still see me. It's getting darker and darker. I am really, really happy that I finished both these books today. I have no idea what I'm going to read tomorrow. For the rest of the day, I'm going to hit my couch because I'm pretty exhausted after all the exercise. And I'm quite happy with all the things that happened. So what am I going to watch tonight? I'm hoping for the new episodes of Bulgasal, but if I'm too tired to concentrate on that, I might restart my only love song again. I don't know what's that with the pandemic. Ever since the pandemic started, my re-watching has increased incredibly, but also my immediately re-watching after finishing. I've always been a re-watcher and I may have gone to movies twice in a row before, but since the pandemic, I have started and circled series, watched and started again and started again more than I have ever done. I'm usually doing that with movies or watching movies on a shorter scale of rewatch and not a few years in between or so, but I have Lately, I finish a series and I start it up immediately. I don't know what that is. And I don't worry about it, to be honest, because the only thing I'm missing is a new series and I like to spend more time with the characters, so why not? Let me know if you're actually interested in my ramblings about what I'm watching in these vlogs or just the books. Then I can stop informing you of what I'm watching, but I thought it might be interesting as well. Anyways, I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm running a little bit late. I have to catch a train. It's my birthday today. I'm turning 47. I don't feel 47 inside, but my body feels like 50. So I don't know how that's going to work out. I'm meeting my family for lunch in Bremen and have a nice afternoon there. I'm hoping to film some and show you some of Bremen, but I don't know. You know me vlogging in public. I am taking How to Lose a Time War as a physical book and I'm downloading on Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wong as my audiobook. These are some popular books that I want to try that they are shorter than my last read, so that's going to be nice. But now I have to run and I'll talk to you later. Oh, and I even put on a dress. Can you see me? I have to go so far away. 7 p.m. and I'm back home. I had a wonderful day with my family. Of course, I didn't vlog as I expected, but I'm super knackered now. But I also wanted to tell you about the reading I have done because I read about a quarter of this is how you lose the time war and I'm confused. I'm partly confused why everybody loves this book and I'm confused of what's happening. There's alternating chapters. We have perspective of two people and we have letters they write to each other. So we get the perspective of one character and then the letter of the other character. Then we get the other character and then the letter of the first character and always alternating. In the chapters, they're always on different worlds and different things happen and they try to change events or influence events. I haven't quite figured out when they're winning and when they're not. I'm confused at what's going on there. I do understand the letters and I like the letters, but like I said, I'm a quarter through. And I'm not going to end the vlog before I finished reading the book. I also bought a book I wanted to show you because as my train always is the last to leave from Bremen, I always have to kill about 10 to 15 minutes alone in the train station. And what do you do? You go to the bookshop in the train station. And I picked up a book. I saw the betrayals there and I couldn't resist buying it. The Binding was one of the best books I read last year. I was so surprised by the writing, by the content and how captivating it was and how much I loved reading it. So of course I needed to buy the betrayals and I mean, it looks nice. Unfortunately, it's also big. I currently have only big books on my TBR, which is growing because I keep buying books. Anyways, I'm going to collapse now on my couch. I have no idea what I'm going to watch. And I'll talk to you as soon as I finished How to Lose the Time War. Let's wrap up the vlog. I finally finished This is How You Lose the Time War. Let me put this down. Now I'm a little bit confused about the whole thing. I can't say if I like the book or if I don't. The whole story is basically we have a war and we have two sides, Garden and the Agency, and each has one of their best agents, blue and red, 
fighting the war in the different strands of time or reality. See, there, that's where I'm a little bit confused already. Basically, we have a chapter where one of the agents is doing something to manipulate the future to guarantee the outcome for their team and to further the story or the events or the reality in the direction that their team wants to go. And then we have a letter from the other character to the agent. Are you confused already? I was confused. Basically, I do like the writing. I think the manipulations or the events that are part of the war are rather interesting and creative. Unfortunately, I don't understand the war. I don't understand why it's there, what the outcome is supposed to be, and I don't completely understand what the agents are doing. It was a little bit over my head, and I don't know if it's because I was a little bit stressed and really busy this week, or in general lately, or if it was a language thing, or in general, and um, I can't follow the science fiction anymore. I don't know. What I liked from the beginning were the letters the two characters or the two agents were writing to each other. I liked the different ideas or creative ways they wrote letters to each other. I liked the letters, how they started off as teasing each other as enemies do, and then how they became more personal, romantic, or not romantic, but it turns into a relationship and that they have feelings for each other. And it's very interesting to see and I enjoyed those letters. So overall, I thought if I'd only liked the letters and decided no, only the letters would also not make any sense. So we need the time war as a background. We need the chapters with them trying to change whatever they're changing. But then again, I didn't care for those parts. Does that make any sense? I'm very confused about this book. I do think if I read it again, maybe in a year or so, I might understand it better or decide I don't like it at all. And that's my rambly end to the vlog. Let me know in comments if you have read This Is How You Lose The Time War, if you liked it, if you understood it, your ideas about it, anything, or any of the other books I talked about earlier. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.